Good morning and welcome to worship wherever you may find yourself. I was sitting here thinking that we may have people watching in Mount Vernon and Lisbon and Solon and Marion and Cedar Rapids and Ames and, uh, and who knows where else. Wherever you are, we are glad that you are connected with us, that we are connected with one another um, in this way. Um, just uh, just a, a few announcements as we get started. Today, we are, as our theme in worship is the Ascension. Um, so the Ascension is the 40th day of the great 50 days. So it would have been actually May 21st. It was, it was Thursday. But um, I thought its themes were worth talking about on a Sunday. And um, just, just in case you're wondering, what is the Ascension? I remember a time in my life when I would get very confused about the Ascension and the Annunciation. And there's also the Feast of the Assumption, which I don't even know what that is. Anyway, it can be confusing. But it is the day, the occasion, when Jesus was taken back up into heaven. So, but there's a lot more to it, and we'll talk about that uh, later in the service. Um, we do have the sharing of joys and concerns today. Uh, and thanks to people who, who got in touch with me this morning. Always, always appreciate hearing from people, and we will lift those prayers up. Um, next week, next Sunday, is Pentecost. So think about, you know, red pajamas, maybe. I, I'm sorry, I just assumed that you all might be wearing pajamas at home. But whatever. But just think about, think about red or... However, that works, but we'll, we'll have a celebration of, of Pentecost next week. Um, one announcement, and that is that um, our beloved Camp Wyoming Presbyterian Summer Camp, it's beyond Presbyterian now, but they, uh, following recommendations from a national organization as well as the CDC, the summer camp program for 2020 has been canceled, and of course... We are simultaneously sad about that and relieved. As a mother of a camper, if they had gone ahead with it, I would have really struggled with deciding what to do. Um, however, they are doing a camp in a box, where for uh, and and we'll have this link on our um, Facebook page, and we'll email it out to you. But this could be for families or individuals. The box has um, just some elements of the camp experience uh, and. and uh, I encourage you to um, to do that. Also, there's family boxes for four. Ours is a family of three. I do not think Spencer the dog wants a t-shirt. So, if you are a family of more than four who's in need of an extra t-shirt or materials, let's talk. Okay. Are there other announcements that we need to make today? The session is meeting on Tuesday. And we will, at that meeting, continue to talk about um, and discern together about what is the, what is the right, um, safest, most faithful way forward for our congregation. Um, but we are all, we're, and we're talking about summer plans and all those things, too. So just, just be aware of that. And I invite you to hold us in prayer as we do that. So... There is. You know what? I'll just mention that now, too. We're going to mention our, our graduates in, during the Joys and Concerns, but today at 2 o'clock, there is a parade for graduates for, for Mount Vernon High School Class of 2020, and um, I plan to be out in front of the church, so maybe you want to come, too, and stay six feet away from me. <laughs> but we can do that, so find your place along the parade route today. Great celebration. And the weather looks like it's going to cooperate. Hallelujah. So, okay. I invite you to take a deep breath. I, I, I almost always say, when we have been together, let's move from getting here to being here. But even that is true at home. I'm sure that's true at home. Just, just the act of kind of settling into a time of worship and getting out of our... Uh, Maybe busy, maybe hectic, but just um, complex lives, right? It, it takes a time of transition. So let's just breathe deeply, settle into where we are, 
be mindful of that breath. And most importantly, be mindful of this truth, this promise that we are in every time, in every case, a place, in every circumstance, connected to God. And we are, even across physical distances, connected to one another. With that renewed awareness, friends, that we are connected across miles, um, let us worship our, our God together. Please join with me with the call to worship. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a joyful sound. For the, For the Lord, Lord Most High is, is to be feared, a great, great king over all the earth. earth, who subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet, who chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom God loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. the ascension of our Lord, the way we live proclaims our lack of faith in his power to deal with the world. Let's confess the incongruity between our faith and practice. Let us pray together. We, we come, come, O Lord, on this, on this day of glory to confess, confess our lack of trust. trust. While we, we sing of, of your Lordship over all creation, creation we have, we have too, too often acted as, as though, though you are powerless in the, in the face of today's events. Help, Help us to live with confidence in your presence today and in hope for life with you forever. forever. Amen. 
Hear the good news of the gospel. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. In Christ, by God's grace, we are saved. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. forget the time with the children so and um, actually while I'm thinking about it I'm just going to turn the fan off it's loud in the sanctuary with the fan running but you can't tell that at home but there so children how are you I miss you uh, it's the last the last week of school I know there are some special things being planned uh, at the elementary school, class by class, I think, but um, there was a kindergarten circus via, although I couldn't, I couldn't load it for some reason, so I haven't been able to see it, but, you know, and the and graduation parade today, so thinking about all of those things and that, um, the, and it's sad because there's a lot that we're missing and um, happy because we're still looking forward to summer anyway, aren't we? So it's pretty complicated. Well, I wanted to uh, teach you, I don't know, maybe you know this, a little finger play that I used to do, it fascinated me as a child. And I used to do it when I, was, when I would sit in the pew and make that hour of worship pass me by. Uh, it's, it's this. So you put, your, you put your fingers together like this, and uh, you go, here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. And uh, you learned it. Julia learned it. Ed learned it. Marie, did you ever learn that? Okay, there we go. You, yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, and I was thinking about that this week and, and thinking about that um, that's just not true right now. <laughs> I mean, here is the church. We still have our church building, and we still have the, the steeple. You open the door, and um, there aren't even as many people in here as I have fingers on my hand. Right. I mean, not even if I only count the fingers and don't count the thumbs. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> so um, that, that, just, that just is right now. And just thinking about, so, so does that mean that there's not church now? Would anyone care to guess the answer? It's not Jesus. Um, yes, there is still church. The, um, thank you, Julia. The, the church is the people, right? The church is the people. This is a church building, but the building is different from the church. So when I, another, saw, another thing that I learned when I was a kid was a song, which we probably will sing in worship next week. But um, it, it, it goes like this, and if you know it, sing along. It says, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together, all who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, 
The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. And we are the church even when we aren't together. We are the church where we are with our families. We are the church whenever we are kind to other people, even if it's just our family. We are, we are the church when we pray for other people. We are the church when we care for one another, when we do an act of kindness for others. When, um, heck, we can be the church if we just go to the parade and cheer on graduates, right? There's all sorts of ways that we are the church. Whenever we are showing love and kindness to the world, to other people, when we're serving other people, we are being the church. So I just, uh, yeah, I just wanted to remind us of that, right? That um, as much as we love the building, as much as, as I, I love this room, as much as I... Um, love being here. This is not the church. And what we are and who we are is not dependent on any building, right? So you, my friends, are the church. And what a joy it is to be the church together. We're so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for that. So um, love you guys. Miss you guys. Um, there may be some plans for some sort of VBS afoot. Stay tuned. And get that Camp Wyoming box if you want to. And let me know if you want our extra t-shirt. Okay. The Wonderbone Waltz will share. Um, let us do the pretzel prayer. Um, just because there have been a lot of birds, we're going to do the thank you for the world so sweet one. Uh, even though I want the Lord to watch between me and thee while we're absent from one another. But let's do this other one. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the friends that we don't meet. Thank you for the friends that we don't meet. Or maybe we meet them in the middle of the road or on a walk or something. But it, you, you, you get it. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, for the birds that sing. Thank you God, for everything. All right. Thank God for you, every one of you. All right. Have a great week. So in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So our readings this morning, um, last week I told you we were going to be in, in John for a couple of weeks, and I'm just going to tell you the truth. Part of the reason I decided to do Ascension today is I, I just did not get excited about the reading from John that was assigned for the seventh Sunday of Easter. I thought the Ascension readings were better, so there you go. That's my, my prerogative according to the Book of Order. So there. <laughs> little little quality for you there. Uh, but I hope, you, I hope you think I made a good choice. So our readings this morning are from the, from the book of the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. And fun fact, some of you probably know this, but the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts were written by the same author. And they really go together. Sometimes we call them Luke-Acts. Um, and as you will see... The author of Luke Acts believed that the ascension was so important, he ended the gospel with that, and he began the book of Acts with it. So the story is kind of a bookend for both. Um, and uh, now, theologically, there are many meanings for the ascension, right? Um, one of them is that when Jesus returned to the Father, he did that in order to create the way for us to go to the Father 
uh, would we die? So that is one of the understandings of the ascension, but there are many. Um, the beautiful thing about theology is any one of these doctrines we continue to wrestle with and continue to find meaning uh, in, and um, we're going to do that today. Because um, I, I, I found a, I found a commentary that just was spot on for the world in which we live today. So I hope you like it as much as I do. But be that as it may, I invite you now to listen to God's word to you. Our first reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. These are the last verses of the Gospel, and we are reading both um, from the Common English Bible. So the setting is that Jesus is with the disciples, and it's, it's, he's been resurrected. This is the end, right? Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of um, and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. I'm going to read that phrase again because I kind of got lost in it, and I don't like it. And a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I'm sending to you what my father promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. They worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem, overwhelmed with joy, and they were continuously in the temple praising God. And there's the ending of Luke. And now we turn to the book of Acts, the first chapter, the first 11 verses. And it begins in this way. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote, that's the gospel of Luke. The first scroll I wrote concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning right up to the day when he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but in only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, It isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood next to them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? This is Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven. will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. 
Amen. So as it's almost summer, I've been thinking about summer vacations, right? We're trying to decide, can we take a vacation? What does that look like? But I was remembering um, the many summer vacations from, our, from my childhood. And one of them that I remember um, was a trip to Colorado. And um, while we were there, my family visited the U.S. Mint. That's where they make all the money, kids, um, in Denver. And we went on a tour. I don't have a lot of memory about that. And we ended up, of course, where did we end up? Where did the tour end, friends? The gift shop, right? Of course. And my parents said that each of us could choose a special commemorative coin. You know, they, they would print, they would print our, our, our regular money, but then all these commemorative coins. And um, I chose, there was a series of presidential coins, and I chose um, a George Washington commemorative coin because he was the first president. My middle brother, Michael, chose Abraham Lincoln. I do not remember what my oldest brother, Bob, chose. I'm sorry, Bob, if you are watching. Let me know if you remember. What I do remember is in the car. I remember this vividly, um, comparing our coins. And Michael, who is three years older than me and very smart, told me that his coin was better because Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves, but George Washington owned slaves. And just like that, the first president of the United States, whom I had held in such high esteem, tumbled off the pedestal upon which he had been placed in my young head. And so it remained for, uh, for years. Uh, that, that conversation just really had a profound effect on how I thought about George Washington. Now, as I have grown older, I have learned, thanks be to God, that no one is all good or all bad, all saint or all sinner. Heroes and all of us are indeed uh, flawed, and we are a mixture of good qualities and less than awesome qualities, right? So, um, I've learned to, f well, no. So you may have also noticed in the last several years a resurgence of interest in the founding father of our nation and the so-called founding fathers. Um, there have been a series of historical books, David McCullough's books come to mind, that have been surprisingly popular. And then, of course, the Broadway phenomenon, Hamilton, uh, that dramatizes the Revolutionary War and the first several years of our new government. Now, I cannot remember when I learned it, and it's possible that I relearned it because maybe we covered this in my high school or college American history classes and I, the import of it was just lost on me, but there was something I learned about George Washington that restored him in my esteem and good grace. And that was that George Washington recognized the importance of stepping down as, presidents, uh, as president. Of, after, after serving two terms, he did not decline to run for a third term. He knew that elections were important. He wanted to avoid the leader for life model that the world had, um, was so accustomed to. That was the only thing they knew. Washington recognized the critical importance of serving just those two terms and stepping aside to allow the next duly elected president to come into office. It was, I realize now, and this is probably thanks to King George's songs in the Hamilton, music, the Hamilton musical, um, just how revolutionary that was. So um, thank you, President Washington, for the foresight and humility it took to buck all tradition and set that trend, which has served our country well for over 200 years. And my brother Michael, I doubt you're watching this, but if you are, there doesn't have to be one coin better than the other. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln and George Washington can both be good commemorative coins to have. Okay, anyway. 
So why am I talking about George Washington and the peaceful transition of presidential power on Ascension Sunday? Anyone? Anyone want to make a guess? Because, because there is something of this stepping away and letting others take over in the story of Ascension. So listen for that. Now, perhaps like many of you, I really didn't know what to do with the story of Jesus ascending back into heaven for a long time. I think I really first learned about Ascension as Holy Day um, in seminary. And the only thing I really knew about the Ascension came from that familiar line in the Apostles' Creed, which we recited every single Sunday. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Anybody else? Was that pretty much what you knew about the Ascension? Yeah. Um, a little aside. Choosing hymns for Ascension was a little difficult. They all have to do with glory, with images of Jesus as king, uh, as his reign, his reign, all the trappings of royal stuff, um, lots about power, and a general sense that Jesus is up there, high above us, right? Um, I ended up choosing um, songs that I thought were fun to sing. Joy to the World, and then we're going to end with King of Kings, because I just, I like those two. I almost went with Crown Him with Many Crowns, which is on the opposite page. I know you don't have a hymnal at home. It's on the opposite page from Come Christians Join to Sing. The final verse, the first part of it, I love. Uh, Crown Him the Lord of Years, the potentate of time. Is that not the best phrase? The potentate of time. Great to sing, because it pushes the sound out. Creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime. Now there is some vocabulary for you, right? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, just, it's just awesome, right? It's just, but it's like up there, even in terms of, I don't think I understood what the potentate of time meant for years, right? Ineffably sublime, what is that exactly? Anyway. But that's, that, those are the kind of hymns that we have um, for, for Ascension Sunday, right? And I think I understand why that is. There are so many hymns that talk about Jesus in exalted, royal, majestic, powerful terms. It's because it's easy for us to find those words and phrases to do that, although I do think creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime, was fairly creative. Um, but you know, scepters and thrones and crowns, right? Easy, easy. The music is in 4-4, quarter time, a march, right? That we instinctively love because it just gets us going. It's easy, easy, easy. And um, they are rousing hymns that lift our spirits and excite our praise. And they don't ask for much more than that, right? They're kind of cheerleading songs. Praise, adoration, loyalty, fervent belief, Victory. And the truth is, we like that stuff. Right? We like it when our team wins. We like being associated with the winner. Right? We do. Um, Fifteen or so years ago, I remember uh, reading about a, a huge parachurch that was planning to remove the cross that held central place in their sanctuary... And they wanted to replace the symbol of the cross with the crown. Why? Because the cross is about weakness. Right? And the crown is about victory and power. Now, I can't help wondering if this human tendency is part of the disciples' question to Jesus. Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? I mean, it is, it is like the last thing that they ask Jesus. Even having watched 
as God and Jesus chose to overcome the world's power and violence with the ultimate display of self-giving love poured out in perfect weakness, they still asked, when does the power and glory get here? Right? Right? This is what we do. This is very, very human. And while they are still waiting for Jesus to put his mighty power on full display for all to see, Jesus is directing their attention to something else entirely. Back on them. You will receive the power from the Holy Spirit, he tells them. And you have work to do. I need you to be my witnesses throughout this world. Kind of interesting, isn't it? In this week's Working Preacher podcast, New Testament scholar Matt Skinner pointed out that it is a mistake to think that think of the church as merely a placeholder. Now, in, in, it's in the gospel that um, Luke mentions, you know, Jesus is going up and he'll be back. Um, but it is a mistake for us to think that the church is just a placeholder, that we just hold things together, right? Just, just keep a lid on everything uh, and wait for Jesus to return and make everything all right again. That's not, that's not what we're here for. Through Christ and the Holy Spirit, we who believe, who are followers of the way, we are the means by which God intends to transform the world. How do you like that? We, in all of our imperfections and foibles and not getting it, we are the means by which God intends to transform the world. You know, where is Jesus now? Uh, sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, judging the quick and the dead? Oh, yes, kind of. But Jesus is present in the world in a whole new way, in us, through the Holy Spirit. Remember, John talks about, abide in me as I abide in you, right? It is that nesting that we want to do in Jesus with the, with the help of the Holy Spirit. When we open ourselves and align ourselves with God's purposes and action in the world through Christ and the Holy Spirit, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Right? Not George Washington. Not the next president although that's important, not Jesus coming back. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Could a resurrected Jesus have hung around with the disciples in perpetuity? Sure. Yes. But, as Jesus had told them time and time again, the disciples had and have a critical role to play. They had work to do, we have work to do, and a calling, and they would be given the power they needed to do it, which we will see next Sunday uh, when we celebrate Pentecost. The triune God, friends, needs us to be out in the world teaching and serving and modeling a faithful way of living and serving others. And in this time in which there is so much talk about churches being essential and needing to be open again, let us be very clear. The church is not a building. Church is not something that happens on Sunday mornings in a particular location. This is not church. Church is the body of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, each member doing what we have been called to do and gifted to do. Where we are, in all times and in all circumstances. No coronavirus, no pandemic can close down the church. If it can, then the church is not actually being the church it is called and commissioned to be. Be who God has called you to be. Love others as God has loved you, even if right now that is 
primarily your family, the people that you are surrounded with, and, a, and maybe a small neighborhood, a small circle of, of neighbors and, uh, and work and a few friends, right? That is okay. Nothing done for the sake of God's kingdom is too small or ever wasted, right? We are the means God intends to use to transform the world. Me, you, together and physically separated, but always connected, right? I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together, even when we are physically apart. And thanks be to God for that. And now we're going to sing Joy to the World because it's fun. It is. It is. Who doesn't like to sing Joy to the World? share together our joys and concerns, and um, let me just start by uh, recognizing that it is a Memorial Day weekend. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, and Memorial Day was founded a hundred or more years ago uh, as a day of remembrance for those who died serving our nation in military service, in active military service, and um, so I, I, that, that is such a big thing, and I know that there are um, people in our congregation who have lost, lost family members or, um, or friends um, in military action, and um, I just invite us to take uh, a moment of silence to acknowledge that. So... Memorial Day in popular culture is also about sales, which maybe we're not doing, and we're not going to pray for those today, and graduations. Um, so uh, congratulations to our high school graduates, Cooper Bechtel from Mount Vernon and Samantha Bennett from Lisbon. Um, we're proud of you both and 
sad that we don't get to have you here to parade you in front of us and and all of that. Um, it was a joy, I know, to watch you grow up. And we, our, pr our prayers and best wishes go with you into the future. And we know you will do well. I'm proud to know you. Um, and don't forget that parade at 2 o'clock. And you probably have other graduates in your lives that you are thinking of too. So congratulations to all. Um, it probably is also worth uh, remembering that Memorial Day, at least in my family, was a day where you went to the cemetery and put um, flowers out for, for family members who had died. So we also remember that in the church, the occasion for that is All Saints Day on November 1st, but let's just, let's just remember, um, it's always a good idea to remember and hold, hold close family members and loved ones who have died. So, so we do that too. Um, a few updates. Shirley Peterson, uh, who is in hospice care and at Lisbon Rehab, um, is doing pretty well. She has been enjoying um, visits from her family. Uh, about a week and a half ago, um, her daughter from Kentucky got to spend a day with her because, of course, this is the this is the complication, the, the grief of this is that family members can come and visit one time. Um, so Shelly came up from Kentucky and now daughter in Massachusetts will be driving out soon, so safe travels to her. Um, but we just pray for um, that time together to be really uh, special and grace-filled and for Shirley and all who love her. Um, and we, re we remember Pearl Martin and her family as well, who goes through similar things at, at, at Hallmark. And for all families who are in this um, in-between time and the very unnatural separation of family and loved ones from each other in the time of, as death, the time of death grows near. Um, so for that, just grace and mercy just be poured down on all families and individuals in that situation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We also um, continue to pray for Craig Palmer, um, who is in the midst of radiation for um, prostate cancer, a second uh, round of, of radiation treatment because the first time through did not Get rid of it. So we, we pray for his body to respond and for healing to come. Lord, in your mercy. And then we have two new prayer requests that have come in. And the first is from the Reekers family. They're requesting prayers for Aileen and her two-year-old son, Ian, who have been living with um, Carl and Beth's uh, son, Russell, and his wife, Lupita, uh, who is Ailey's sister, uh, for the past year in the D.C. area. Um, they, Ailey and Ian, are, um, came to this country from Honduras and they are seeking asylum and they have an asylum hearing via Zoom on Tuesday. And of course that is just fraught um, and deportation is a possibility, who knows. Uh, but just as an awareness of what they would go back to in Honduras, um, if they are not granted asylum, just a few weeks ago, Lupita and Aileen's sister and niece were robbed at gunpoint on their way back from the grocery store. Um, this is daily life along with other concerns for safety and a lack of job, jobs and just opportunity and um, you know issues with simple things like water. So um, just for that whole situation. Lord, in your mercy. And um, this request from Pete Ryan and Teresa Sullivan, Pete's aunt Rita, his mother's youngest sister. She has been living in a memory care unit the last few years up in Minnesota. She collapsed on Friday with breathing issues, was tested, and it came back positive for COVID-19. So just a, a real... Um, concern and heartbreak for the family. So we ask for prayers for Rita, um, for Pete's mom, for their, uh, I didn't write it down, Pete, is it four other siblings, maybe five, I can't remember, and 
and all of the extended family, and indeed everyone in similar circumstances, right? This, this is a story repeated uh, across the state, across the country, across the world. So Lord, in your mercy. Um, we pray for lots of other people, um, just all the situations. Um, one thing we haven't talked about is uh, uh, people who live in abusive situations and, and with a sheltering in place. For too many people, shelter was elsewhere, not home. And so for children and um, adults who are now almost in prison with their abuser, we pray, Lord, in your mercy. So for all of those things, um, we pray. And as a sign of our trusting in God to be with us and lead us through our troubles, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen okay. friends god has shown us the meaning of generosity in the beautiful diversity of creation in the overflowing love of jesus christ in the never-ending gift of the Holy Spirit. God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that honors each other, to serve others with joy, to share our love and material possessions. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and in what is ours to give. And um, we have been doing um, an offertory dance party because why not? Because it's fun and joyful, and that's what we need. And um, this one was inspired by Stephen Colbert. Uh, if you want to, haven't seen it, you should Google Stephen Colbert, King of Glory, to know how we were inspired. So, okay. Enjoy and dance at home. financial support of the congregation. We're so grateful for that as we continue to figure out how to uh, serve our community and one another in this time. 
and we appreciate your prayers as well. And thank you for all the ways that you are using your resources, your financial resources, to make a difference in our community and, um, and organizations, other organizations that do good work as well, just supporting each other. Because um, our, you know, money talks in this culture, and that is one of the best ways that we can serve and support other people and be the kingdom of God. So let us pray our thanks together. Ever-present God, with this offering, we give you ourselves, all that we have been, all that we are, all that we shall become, and our desire to walk in your way. Accept our offering and our hearts, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. up and that's okay. I hope you liked listening to it. Friends, how good and pleasant it is to be together in person or in spirit, encouraging and consoling, provoking and inspiring. But now the service is ended. Why do you stand looking up toward heaven? Go in peace, friends, into the world for the love of the world. And as you do that, remember that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit are at work in you, in the people around you, in the world out there ahead of you, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.